dangerous. It's devious. It's devious. That's right. The special eight ounce small petite pony bottle version of the game room is not just about new games. It's not just about the Dreamcast and the PlayStation. Mm -mm. We love the classics. We go back to our roots. We get lots of emails saying we want more classic games. We don't forget where we come from. So right here we got one of our favorites, one of my personal favorite games of all times, Xevious. One of the, I guess, truly landmark games when it comes to overhead action scrollers. Oh, yes. About, you know, you're that one last spaceship or the one and only spaceship out to destroy six billion aliens and it's your job to save the Earth. That's quite a responsibility. There's something that you just don't see every day. Not anymore. It's da dangerous. Remember, <laughs> it's devious. It's devious, baby. Remember the Atari logo in Blade Runner? Yes, the curse of Blade Runner. <laughs> What's the curse of Blade Runner? Everybody that advertised that mo in that movie went out of business. Who else advertised much. it? Well, Coca Cola, they advertised it. Oh, yeah, they're, they're not around yeah, anymore. But, no, 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 no. But they're, they're the exception. But right after they did really, they did that uh, that advertisement, they released the new Coke. Oh, new Coke. And that failed miserably. Yeah. No, it was way. It was after that. Blade Runner came out in 82, and they didn't come out with new Coke until 85. Exactly. That's my point. That's three years later. That's my point. They still had the curse. Oh, you're an idiot. They still had the curse. So something bad happened to them. They're doing been fine now. Papers Coke's still written around. About it. There's been papers written about it. It's not like they were bought uh, out by Fago or anything. Uh, so, <laughs> here's Xevious, by the way. Yeah, this let's, is Xevious. Let's Zevious. get back on track here. The Curse of Blade Runner. Sorry, but this is uh, this is one of the all-time best overhead shooter games ever. Well, this is one of the pioneers of overhead yeah, shooters, Yeah, it's a pioneer, because right? you had, basically, you had three dimensions here. What kind of shooters were there before this? There was Zaxxon. There was Zaxxon, which is the ultimate. Zaxxon That's just the out. best shooting game ever made, period. Uh, well, would Contra be considered a shooting game? Not on the same level, because you're not in a spaceship. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> there, there you go. Hey. We're going to have to review Contra soon for the yes. NES. And Zaxxon. I didn't tell definitely, oh, definitely I think Zaxxon. I have that for the Atari at home. Yeah. Ninja here's, Golf. Here's the oh, pff, Ninja Golf kicks ass. Now, Mark loves these little spinning plates. They remind him of uh, My you know, Superman 2. He's blowing up things. Again. Yeah, this is just like, you know, people, we didn't take the time to record anything else except the first level because uh, we are yeah. lazy. So I never really got very far in this game because I was only playing it when I was a kid and I didn't have quite the uh, mad skills that I do now. Although I did win Akari Warriors 2 for the NES. I love that game. Number 2 wasn't as good as number 1. I don't know, I like 2. 2 is when he fought the big crab at one point, right? It was that weird one. I, th I think that's one of, the f one of the first attempts that uh, any games made for a home system to actually incorporate voice talking into a game. Good lord. It was with Akari Warriors, and it wasn't very good. It was like... <laughs> that was like the amount of <laughs> dialogue that it had. <laughs> so I'm like... The trip to Wendy's. This is where you just. I, yeah, I kind of feel ouch. bad for the enemy. You know what? It's it's not just this game. It's the. Uh, that was nice. It's every childhood, whether it be game or cartoon, where the enemy is always stupid. Yep. Like G.I. Joe. See, no one ever takes into account that every Cobra soldier maybe had a family. Maybe they had a mom or dad, you know, wife. I think kids. they covered that in Austin Powers. One of deleted they scenes. That, in Austin Powers. But that was only in deleted scenes. They never did, they never put that out on tape. I actually have actually it on made, tape. Actually maybe they did put it on tape. They have it on the DVD and it's on tape. Yeah. So oh it, it is. Out. Yeah. It's brilliant. I don't know why they took it out of the movie. I know. Anyway. Like like these could be people. Probably these, but Zevians have are the real too. humans. But that is the question of the whole game. So base so you're oppressing them is what this is all about. They're teaching oppression in a video game because you got to kick them off their rightful property. That's messed up. I feel upset, man. I can't watch this anymore. So, here come these plates again that Mark loves. These are so cool. Apparently they defy he, gravity. He They're plates were, that fly through air. Yeah, apparently, he thought these were the best graphics ever. Last I checked, he thought they'd never get any better. Last I checked, metal was heavier than air. It would it would fall. There's my extreme knowledge of physics coming back into play, thank you. Mm. That's why I was a management major. Game I don't actually over. know anything. That was just Xevious for the Atari 7800, a system I think that really most people don't know about. Underappreciated is the correct word for that game system. The, it was such a, it was such an improvement for was, Atari. It had good graphics and sound. It, it was, was poor timing. It was poor timing. They, the, went, they went directly up against the NES.